Hi, my name is Kevin. I'm from the United States, but I've lived in China for many years. You know, when I first moved here, my friends asked me why. Well, the reason is quite simple. I've always been interested in Chinese history and culture. And I think that's derived from my childhood hobby of collecting porcelain. This exquisite porcelain always had some mysterious connection to somewhere far away in China. Where is this place? Where does porcelain come from? Would you like to find out? Then come along with me right now, and let's go to China. Many years ago, during the time of the Silk Road, when traders would come into China, this town was called Changnan. It is said that the English word China is derived from this name. Changnan is the predecessor of Jingdezhen, and the latter is a city that enjoys the same reputation as China. Here you get to see porcelain everywhere. Do you see the wall in front of me? These porcelain pieces remind me of the porcelain vase that had the same pattern I once saw in one of those museums. Fascinating. Oh wow, yeah. How beautiful. Wow, so this is Qinghua. Qinghua is Yan dialect. Ah, just like Jiangsu. Ah, this is this is Qinghua. Ah, this is Qinghua. Wow, these are Ming Dynasty era porcelain bowls. This is amazing. Since I was a kid, I've always had an interest in porcelain products. Porcelain, once a kind of ordinary clay, can be crafted to become exquisite artifacts. How does such a change take place? I think I might just find the answer here in Jingdezhen. This is Phil, my old friend, who is also a great porcelain painting artist. Thanks to his introduction, I finally understand the most important element in porcelain making: the temperature. And and the, the beauty of it, because really what it is is clay, and then color, and then glass. A thin coating of glass. Ah. And so when we when you fire those together, they create these beautiful. In the West, we would look at these as broken pieces of no importance. But here, they actually uh, they collect shards, and I've seen exhibitions of shards, with just a broken piece like this. But it was so beautiful uh, that it represents an era, it represents a uh, a human sort of hist a moment a moment in Jingdezhen. Before I came to Jingdezhen. I could never have imagined using blue and white porcelain to decorate the floor. It is amazing. Thousands of years ago in Europe, blue and white porcelain was out of reach for the common people. In one of Giovanni Bernini's paintings, *Banquet of the Gods*, blue and white porcelain was depicted in graceful nobility next to the gods. But here in Jingdezhen. Blue and white porcelain is widely used in daily life. Wow! Holy cow! What is this? And then these are the fireworks. Wow! Rambling about, I see blue and white porcelain in various patterns. It turns out that everything can be made in the pattern of blue and white, and it is just gorgeous. I feel grateful to Phil for bringing me into this brand new world. Where porcelain is no longer lifeless utensils, but a way of expression filled with enthusiasm and passion, I cannot imagine anywhere else other than Jingdezhen that makes a closer combination of art and life, and enriches porcelain with the color of life.
It is said that Jing Dejen's kiln never went dim and stopped manufacturing porcelain in the past thousands of years. And the art of ceramics has also been passing down for thousands of years, blooming even today. According to Exploitation of the Works of Nature, an ancient Chinese work on agriculture and handicrafts, there are 72 steps in making a single piece of porcelain. Yes, 72 steps. And all of them takes time and patience. Okay. This is the first time I've, I've really done anything like this, making pottery with a, a hand-turned wheel here. That's amazing. The first step of molding is stretching. A craftsman must have at least 10 years of experience to be good at stretching and the most artistic step among the 72 steps of the procedure is the creativity in adding finishing touches and glazing. Use needles to paint on the bare base, gently imprinting the vines in floral patterns before glazing. After being glazed with new colors, the inspiration finally comes alive. <笑>你要看懂看懂你要看懂你要看懂你要看懂你要看懂你要看懂你要看懂你要看懂你要看懂你要看懂你要看懂你要看懂你要看懂你要看懂你要看懂你要看懂你要看懂你要看懂你要看
which is different from anything I've ever seen before. Artists from around the world find inspiration here and share their unique understanding of beauty. Generations of ceramics artists have built their world of innovation. They're here always learning, sharing, and communicating. It's not uncommon to see this kind of cultural inheritance in Jingdezhen. There are ceramics workshops with children learning clay arts at the night fair, and artists experimenting to renovate the traditional techniques. Fortunately, as my visit is about to reach its finale, I finally have the chance to meet the famous blue and white artist, Master Gan Dao Fu. The master said that blue and white first appeared in China's Tang Dynasty. In the culture of northern China, blue and white are an interpretation of natural growth. Blue represents spring, and white represents autumn. As a crystallization of cultural exchange, blue and white porcelain conveys a unique aesthetic complexity of the nation. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> For the past 10 years, Master Gen Dao Fu has been dedicated to creative innovation of traditional Chinese blue and white porcelain. By combining the Chinese image with Western abstract art, he has created a glaze that naturally flows and softens, which later, with the assistance of the fire, turns into a natural and vivid pattern in blue and white. This glazing is a creation of casual natural force, whose beauty is beyond words. The fire makes porcelain out of clay. Meanwhile, Jingdezhen makes porcelain a name tag of China. Throughout history, Jingdezhen has always been a city without walls. Wherever you're from, you'll find a sense of belonging here. The city blooms great charm with its beautiful porcelain and artistic atmosphere. You'll love it. One of the joys of coming to Jingdezhen is understanding the the Chinese techniques and for me it's been blue and white painting. I actually created this before I come to Jingdezhen because um, China has been a huge influence uh, to the UK ceramic industry and obviously that's influenced me in my work. So while I was here I was learning a lot of traditional blue and white painting. The charm of blue and white does not stop at being a porcelain pattern. It is also a bond, which brings the cultural exchange in the world closer. Porcelain is a Chinese creation spread to the rest of the world. It's been taken to foreign cultures and brought back to China. In the process, it has undergone exchanges and a fusion of different cultures. In Jingdezhen, there are visitors from all around the world. Its prosperous fair has witnessed changes in time. In this wonderful land, the clay and the kiln continue to create new stories and new miracles. There are many people, like you and me, who are deeply obsessed with porcelain and are attracted to this reputed city. I followed blue and white porcelain back to its homeland, where I feel the warmth of the kiln.